Hey guys, welcome, and I'm here with a fantastic man and a special guest who goes by the Thank name of Gabriel friend. or Gabriel Polyglot or Gabriel Polyglot. Gabriel the Polyglot or the the Polyglot. <laughs> So we're here in Lisbon, capital of Portugal, and um, you know he happened to be here as well. So we decided to make a, um, an interview, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be a great one. Hopefully. So, Gabriel, first and foremost, uh, who are you? What is your language background? What is your background in general? Mm -hmm. So I was born in Brazil. I was born and raised in Brazil, and I started learning English at the age of ten, and I finished a, an entire course, a, a six-year course. Uh, Basically, in Brazil, we pay a lot of money for those, so my, my dad paid for it. And then I moved to Canada when I was 17. Well, get it, when, I, when I got uh, to Canada, it was a bit interesting because comparably, you know, uh, compared to other Brazilians, my English was very good. However, at an absolute standpoint, it was terrible. Like, I was just, uh, but, like, I struggled to understand people. I struggled to communicate. Often people would be just like, oh, like, uh, oh, what you say? Can you repeat it? So I always thought I wasn't gifted at languages. Then I started learning German and French at the same time in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I got to B2 in four years in both of them. So I kind of developed this uh, method to, do, to learn two languages at once. And um, excited with, with the success that I had with that, I went for other languages. Then I started learning Italian and Dutch at the same time. And... Uh, then Russian and Mandarin, and they just kept going. And uh, you, you got bitten by the polyglot bug. Yes. <laughs> so you, you you learn languages like in pairs, like every time you learned uh, normally, two, yeah. two languages at once. Normally. Oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. Thank you for the introduction. No problem. Yeah. So now I have a list of questions I printed that in advance because I knew we would meet. Well prepared. So. Um, I'm guess she's gonna go through uh, some of them. Uh, let's start with the first one, mm -hmm. and that is, what's the nicest or most memorable compliment you've gotten when speaking a foreign language? So basically, uh, I, I would say that it's a reaction that I often get when I speak Russian is a very positive one. And so, like, often Russians will be just like, "Oh, you have shock it. Like, I'm I'm in shock because your Russian is so good. It's not that amazing, but like, it's good enough to to impress." Uh, I still have a long ways to go to just truly master the language. But I like to recite uh, Pushkin, who's my favorite poet. So normally that tends to really um, impress, people. impress the Russian people. So like, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the things that I really like to hear. It's only, normally in Mandarin too, uh, people, like sometimes Chinese people will be like, oh, how long did you live in China? And I haven't been to China. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a big compliment too, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Of course. Okay, so let's talk about this. This was the, the compliment stuff. Now let's talk about like that one. Yes, okay. this one. What has been the most awkward situation you've been involved in? You've been involved in when speaking a foreign language. So recently, this is a, a recent story. I'll try to make it short because it's, it's just kind of funny. I was at, at my favorite uh, cemetery in Paris, Père Lachaise, which yeah. I. It's kind of weird, but he I spends just... a lot of time in Pelaches. <laughs> I don't know why. But... <laughs> it's it's it's, a, it's got a beautiful ambiance to just go like walk yes. around. You know, it's very calm. Anyway, so I was there. Too calm. Way too calm. Way too dead. calm. People are very Let's quiet dead there. Silence. Let's say. <laughs> dead silence. Dead silence. <laughs> Good pun. Yeah. Um, so I was just walking um, in Pelaches, and then this elderly lady. Just, she seemed frazzled and uh, she asked me in German if I could help her. And it, just to let you guys know, normally nobody approaches you in German in Paris. Right. Right. So then I told her in German, like, yeah, I'll be happy to help. How can I, how can I help you? Then she started trying to explain what was happening that I, that I didn't quite get because she was really struggling with German. So she, she switched into Russian. Then I was like, oh, okay, I speak that too. So like, then I started asking her a few questions. Then she couldn't really explain it in Russian e uh, either. So uh, she switched sw switched into Polish, but my Polish is not that good. Maybe I reached that uh, like A2. And then she kept saying something, Vejście, which I believe is exit. And I was like, oh, she's, she's lost because it's a gigantic cemetery. And then I explained in... Uh, uh, in German, and she was still very confused, though, because her German was a bit basic. And I guess she just spoke those languages, maybe like A1 
German, A1, Russian, and then obviously fluent Polish. And then I told her in Polish that I, uh, that I, li uh, that I like Chopin. Then she went nuts because Chopin is buried at Père Lachaise. She went bananas. She went bananas and she spoke a, a very rapid Polish that I understood maybe 20% of. And then I explained to her like how to get out of the cemetery. And then 15 minutes later, she was still lost and she was asking this French gentleman the same question in German I saw from afar. And the, the gentleman was like, oh, Madame, je, je parle pas euh, l'allemand. <laughs> he, he and then basically I tried to explain to her again how to get out. Interesting story. And all of this happening in Pelaches. Yes. One of the most beautiful, iconic places, cemeteries in the world where yeah. Oscar places, Wilde, I mean, Oscar Wilde, uh, uh, Georges Bizet, George one of my favorite composers. There's a lot of, yeah, it's, it's an exciting, it's, well, maybe not, a, <laughs> maybe not exciting <laughs> place, but it's a really it's, interesting place. It's a really interesting place. It's true. Anyway, okay, so let's go back to the questions. If you could, this is an interesting one. If you could start your language journey all over again, mm -hmm. what would you do differently? Learn different languages, learn them in a different order mm -hmm. uh, or learn, learn them in a different way for that matter. Yeah. I think I would, I would maybe, Keep the order because I think that you know I, I started with English, which is which was obviously a really really important language. It is still a really important language. Um, then I went, you know, I, Spanish. I kind of learned through osmosis, but like in in the in the meantime, you know, and uh, of course I still have a long ways to go to truly master it fully. But then French and German. But anyway, like I think that the most important. And it goes back to what I what I uh, was saying when uh, I was introducing myself. Is that basically uh, in the Brazilian language school? What happened was that um, we focused way too much on grammar and like a lot of like little written exercises and you know the, the like very traditional um, learning methods. And uh, looking back, like a lot of a lot of things were like really we would focus on low frequency words, not enough uh, exposure. So definitely change that. I'll get a lot more exposure to the language. Um, try to speak as much as possible. Try to engage with the language in different ways and not just rely on a course. Hmm. And that's that's the main thing, I would, I would say. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. But this thing that you said in the Brazilian school system, I think it's worldwide. It's yeah, just, it's true. It's same Brazilian. in France, same in Canada, same yeah. in Italy, probably yep. <laughs> everywhere. Yep. Yep. yep, that's it. Okay, well, uh, great answer. Uh, rapid, what, 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 wait, 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 seconds. Uh, we have a lot of other questions here. We have so many, it would take us three hours. We have to decide, we have to select <laughs> some. I had to skip one page of mm -hmm. questions. We're gonna get to that um, mm -hmm. in, in other videos. Which language would you use to seduce someone? And why? And why? I would say... Oh, well, first, let me pre preface this. We've been going around. We met in Porto as well. This guy knows how to talk to people. Oh, thank you. As well. God so we, we, had great, we, had, we had a great time. Was it? Oh, you've been very respectful. You to know, see so the, you know, Gabriel the Polyglot in action on ah. the street. <laughs> anyway. This, Good this stuff. Okay. The premise. No, there, so uh, I would say probably French or Italian. Because, I mean, both, it, they're objectively beautiful, I would say. And, you know, of course, like that, when you ask someone, like, oh, what's your favorite, like, what language do you think is the most beautiful? There's some element of subjectivity, but I think that it's undeniable that the French and Italian are just gorgeous languages, and they're just, uh, they can be very, Thank you. you know, yeah. <laughs> Mi piace davvero moltissimo in Italia. It you're just sounds... Italian, no, you're like you're... Quarter Italian, Italian. Quarter Italian. Quarter Italian. Okay. So it's in my blood, it's in my heart, too. And uh, French, too, is just like elegant, you know, like, j'adore la française, you know, so, uh, maybe not the Quebec accent, even though I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Canadian as well, but uh, just kidding, it's it's a cute accent. But, I've uh, been hearing a lot of Quebecois here in, in, uh, in Portugal. Really? A lot of French okay. and even a lot of Quebecois, which was oh, quite I surprising. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, so Italian and French are Italian languages French. that you use to seduce the ladies. Uh, yeah, that I would, yes. Or they, <laughs> they use to seduce the ladies. I'm a committed man right now. Uh, so, okay, so, which language or languages have you changed your mind the most about? Uh, maybe about how one sounds or how challenging it is, but a language that is giving you a new perspective. I would say definitely Mandarin because I, I, when I started learning, I was really torn between Japanese and Mandarin because back then I was, I was a lot more attracted to Japanese culture and I just thought it was a, uh, a nicer sounding language and everything. And, but I chose Mandarin 
just because it seemed more challenging and it's more, you know, it's got a billion speakers in the world. So I thought may as well learn Mandarin and, but I didn't like it as much initially, but now I really do. And now I think it's a, I, I like the culture a lot more too. There, it's just such an interesting culture, such a cool language. And it's, I think it sounds uh, nice too, like basically. So this is an interesting point that uh, I myself, for example, here we're in Portugal and people, the, the kind of the version of Portuguese that people speak here, a lot of people don't like it. So a lot of people keep asking me, why did you learn um, Portuguese from Portugal? Portuguese Lusitano, they call it. <laughs> and my answer is that, well, it, it's a like it's a European version. It's true that, you know, Brazil has many spe many speakers like mm. Actually, Over 200 million? Actually, yeah, 210 yeah, million. So if you compare them with the eight mil the mere 8 million speakers of Portugal, mm. Portuguese from Portugal, it's a huge difference. Uh, but I have to tell the truth, when I listened to, uh, when I heard Portuguese from Portugal around and I didn't speak it, and it sounded right, like Russian, first and foremost. True. It sounds Slavic. It sounds Slavic. <laughs> uh, and then I didn't like the sound of it, but yeah. now I really do. When uh, I, when I think when you speak a language, in Italian, we say l'appetito viene mangiando. So when you start speaking the language and you produce an articulate sounds in your mouth, you want to learn more. Right? You want to learn more and you start liking it. So same for Mandarin. I think Japanese sounds like I don't know. To people who don't, for a person who doesn't speak either Japanese or Mandarin, they might find maybe Japanese more enticing, more uh, alluring. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I think when you start speaking the language, you start liking it. You know, it's True. like when you st maybe you don't. Imagine that you are dating a girl, you don't know if you like it that much, but then you start, <laughs> you start yeah. talking to her, you start to get to know her better, and you start liking her more and more. So, that's true. Um, anyway, so... <laughs> so, you know, just go beyond the superficial um, elements of uh, the language, right? And exactly. The, you go deep. Right? <laughs> you go deep into the language, that's true. You go deep. Okay, so which language have you changed your mind the most about? I already asked you this question. How do you go about choosing your next language to learn? That is a, a really cool question. Normally, I, I like to um, follow my heart in a way. So just like, oh, like I'm, I'm really, I fall in love with some element about language. I don't know, like I just get really into, I get really into the, um, the culture or the music and then I just want to go and learn. But it also depends on, uh, I take a somewhat logical approach as well, for instance, because I... You know, I'm somewhat comfortable with Russian, uh, so I wanted to go further with Slavic languages. And I think that the next one that I would really like to learn is Polish. So Why? I just, Why? I, I'm, I'm wondering. Yeah, well, well, basically there's, just, I mean, Polish people are awesome. They're just so nice. Um, basically, and Poland like, is a great country and a great culture. Yeah, that's true. Like, I haven't been to Poland, but I've met a lot of cool Polish people in Vancouver, as well as in Paris, where I live. And... Um, the language sounds very cute, I find. Like, I, I like the way it sounds. And uh, basically, I've already gotten to, like, maybe A2 at best. So I just, I thought, well, why not go further? And um, and another language that I really want to learn is Japanese. Because, like, I've, I really like the culture. I really like Naruto. I really like, <laughs> not just Naruto, but, you know, like a lot of things about... I did uh, karate, kyokushin karate for a little while. So it's something that I, has always, like, drawn me. That Makes, attracted me really. Makes total sense. Okay, on to the next question. Uh, what is the next language that you plan to learn? Okay, we've covered that. How many languages have you started but then stopped learning? A lot. A lot of them because I went through a phase. Like, let me count. Let me count. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say maybe, like, I don't know, I'd say even like 15 uh, because, like, I went through a phase that I was just picking up uh, Pimsleur audiobooks from the Vancouver Library. Mm -hmm. So then I just started Tagalog. Uh, Arabic, uh, Czech, uh, Polish, but then I just went a little bit further with Polish. Um, Catalan that I actually got decent at like nine years ago, but then I just kind of... So I started learning so many different languages. Uh, Greek, uh, Hebrew, and are, those are languages that I learned. Uh, I just learned the very basics and then I thought, well, unfortunately, I don't have enough time to learn all of them at once <laughs> as much as I would love to. So then those are languages that I want to come back to uh, someday. But I, yep, yeah, for now they're, they're on the, on the, the, the waiting lines order, there. Yeah. The, yes. Okay. Uh, 
as far as I'm concerned, I, I think I started learning Romanian and a couple of other languages and then I stopped, but I think it's it's normal. You know, you so, explore, yeah. you explore, you yeah. find out, okay, I like this. Maybe you can always go back in time. You can, in time, no. You That'd be go, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the DeLorean. And <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. like if you're taking the DeLorean to learn a language with a new method, now that you have, That's you know, true. experience, go back in time with DeLorean just to learn. And language. tell yourself in the past, like, don't do this. Like, don't focus on grammar that much. Like, cool. It's a, it's an idea for a cool title. If I could go back in time, yeah. we could make a movie together. Of course, I mean with the DeLorean. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one last question mm. uh, before we go, and the question goes like this: If languages had to remain a hobby and you couldn't make a living off of them, what would you be doing right now as a profession? That's a very cool question. I think that maybe I would still be tutoring math because that was my business before I started really tackling languages. Uh, so I had a tutoring business and then that just transitioned into the language business that I have uh, now and I have a presence in 119 countries, uh, over 59,000 students and uh, so I'm happy with that but like of course like if I had uh, to go back to te teaching calculus, why not? <laughs> I, I, I believe that I myself, I really like mathematics. I mm. think you have to follow what your heart tells you. That's true. He's an engineer. Yes. Impressive so, guy. At the end of the day, I ended up doing, you ended up doing this. I ended up working with language learning and I'm very happy that I did. So mm -hmm. I think Same. just to conclude, I think you should follow what your heart says, not the society, not your peers, not your family, not even your family members. I think you should follow what you really stand for. And then, you know, that has language learning has changed our lives. That's true. <laughs> really. Undeniably. Undeniably. So. So a couple of other things, a couple of observations uh, before uh, we, we finish. Um, we have made a multilingual video here too in Portugal and I will put the link in the description box. We've talked um, in eight languages, I think, something like eight languages. Eight or nine, I think. Yeah. Eight or nine languages. Um, so if you want, you can check it uh, in the link below. I think it's a great interview. Sure. Um, and uh, the second thing is where can people find you? So I got a, my Instagram is Gabriel Polyglot uh, or at Gabriel Polyglot as well as Gabriel Polyglotta. So I have two Instagrams uh, or on YouTube, Gabriel Polyglotta. Great. So thank you for watching and uh, we will see you next and uh, very soon. Thank you, Luca. And cheers. Bye bye. Ciao. <laughs>